So Molly, Mary, Tyler, I want to talk to you today about crab pots. I took mine apart today because, quite frankly, they were an unholy mess the way I tied them up. And I've decided that I'm going to do it right. What I use is a red and white buoy. I use that consistently. It's the most common buoy out there, and frankly, white and red are the most difficult to see on choppy water late in the evening. So I'm adding to that a little yellow. And so I'm going to show you how to tie the ropes. Now, there's, as far as I know, three different kinds of crabbing rope. There's sinking lines. You have to get a sinking line. If you get a floating line, a pox on your house because that is what gets torn up in props. It's called lead line because there's actually a very thin lead wire inside the rope. It makes it very difficult to work with and when you buy it, it's going to have a lot of turns and kinks in it. So lay it out, work it, get it as much as you can, all of the kinks and rolls out of it. And then when you want to start working on your pot, and you'll see why in a minute, go ahead and make sure you have both ends available to you. I've got the other end of this rope down here. So I'm going to grab this rope about a 12 inches up from the end. Again, I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. And then I'm going to grab about two to three feet, uh, no more than three feet of rope. And I'm going to double it on itself. And then I'm going to do it again. So now I have three stamped strands of rope between my hands and I also have an extra 12 inches on a tag end. So I'll go ahead and grab this guy just like this and I'm going to show you if you've ever tied two ropes together and I'll show you that in a different video. Um, that's all you're doing here. So you go put your I put two fingers out like this, over, 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 okay, so I'm going to start that over again, actually let me, let me show you this, this is a very smart video, well let's say you have two ropes that you want to tie together splice together, you'll have them overlapping. Mary, you know this from your whitewater rescue training. Okay, so you have the ropes overlapping. So then you'll grab them and you'll take the tag in and you roll it over your finger, over your finger, over your finger, at least two or three times if you're really optimistic, four times. Okay, and then slip the end of that rope in where your finger was. It's really hard with this wire rope. Oh, let's try it again. This is why I recommend using two fingers instead of one. So I've got two fingers there. So run it over, over, over again. And then take your fingers out and run the rope in where your fingers were. And then pull that now you're going to have to dress this knot, which means that you worry it a little bit, you work it, you make it look really nice and symmetrical, and it's very difficult. But in the end, you get a nice little knot like that. And then you flip over and you do the exact same thing. So two fingers into one. You probably need more rope than that. One. Two, three. It's really hard with this. And then, of course, you come back where your fingers were. You grab it. Now, what's sweet about this setup is once you get that knot really pretty and tied well, and now you've done it twice, it self tightens. And that right rope, those two ropes will not come apart. So, you know how to tie two ropes together, so you know how to tie a buoy on a crab trap. I'll show you how this works. If I can get my knots.
So you have your rope with no knots, no kinks in it. And you're going to throw the tag in down like that. You're going to grab about a foot up because you're going to need this later. And you give yourself about two to three feet of rope. And then you double it. And then you triple it. So now you've got three strands of rope all about two feet, two and a half, three feet long. So go ahead and grab it. Now you've got the loop end here. So just like you would if you were going to try to tie two ropes together, put two fingers down along the spine of this rope, and grab it. Now this is the really long end, of course, you've got. So one, two, always working your way back inside. That's, just, that's what you have to remember is that you're working back inside. Okay, now you want to take this tag in and you want to run it through these loops. And don't forget the last one. It has a tendency to want to fall off. Oh, well, there's the end of this bad boy right here. So I can easily grab it, stick it through, and then without burning your hand and holding these loops nice and firm, so that you don't lose them because on a new rope they're going to want to go all piggly piggly on you. Pull it through and with any luck I've tied this knot right. Okay. So now all you have to do is pull on it to tighten it up. There's no science to it. You just work it down until it's nice and firm and neat and you dress your knot you worry a little bit you massage it like that you get a really nice looking knot now again you take the tag in I don't have to grab the tag in because I can just push it through the loop you can see that the rope is on top of the loop Okay, don't come around again and do this, but just make sure you have it on the right side and then slip the tag end of the rope, the long tag end, through that loop. I never cut my ropes. I use the entire length they give me in the store. I figure it's just more good exercise for me. Now watch the magic happen. One of these three ropes is going to be the one I want to pull on. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to pull that loop right there, and it ain't going to go no more. I now have a knot in the rope that will not slip. And miraculously, it is big enough to keep the float from sliding down the rope towards the grab trap, crab trap. A lot of people tie off and forget that they have to put a knot at the bottom of their buoy. Otherwise, the buoy just keeps sliding down the rope when you're pulling in the trap, and it's a big hassle. I always wondered why that hole was that big. It's big enough to put three ropes through. Duh. Then, because red and white are so difficult to see and dim lights are on choppy seas, I put a little splash of yellow in. I like to put this football on. And then a last little yellow topper. It's just what I do. Somebody will come along and do something similar and they'll drive me nuts. But Right now, I'm the only one in Tillamook Bay that does that. All right, so now I have the other end of that triple loop and the rope that I said was going to be about 12 inches longer. And it's about 7 or 8 inches longer now. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, Grab the rope, all three strands. You might want to come up here, take a look. Because it's really tough rope, I'm going to use these two fingers to wrap around. 
Now, I'm probably not going to do four or five wraps on this because I want to be able to make it slide. So I'm only going to do three turns. So, what is that? Two, three. Again, where your fingers were, and then if you're really careful, and maybe you should spit on this or do something to make it slicker. You worry this knot. All the way down as far as you can. Can't really tell you what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, just trying to get this knot to slide. Remember how we pulled those knots together? This is what we're doing. Now, I don't know why that ended up looking like that. Half the time it does it and I tied this knot wrong. Good news is, it could be that I tied it right, but that there's just a hard twist in the knot and it's got so much memory in it that it didn't slide around the way it was supposed to. And I think that's probably it. So here we go again. Today, I'm gonna try, no, I'm not gonna go upside down. I always go right-handed. It could be because of, of where the tag end was compared to the loop. So that could be my problem. I've got the tag end on top of the other two. One, two, three, I'm gonna say three. Ooh. Try to keep your loops all in order. Uh, disaster striking. Right. It looks like a good knot, but get it down and the answer is yes with enough time keep working those loops down I suspect I could get this perfect I wanted to and you see I've got a nice, pretty, well-dressed knot right there. Just like I have a nice, pretty, well-dressed knot there. And just because I'm that kind of a fellow, I'm gonna do it again. One, two, just two, underneath. See if I can't work this down. Where it belongs. See what I'm doing is I'm tying a knot on top of a knot. If you got one, you got none, right, Mary? Okay, if you wanted to, you could uh, cut this off so it doesn't get in your way. Make sure if you do cut it off, you burn the end so that it doesn't unravel. But that is the general idea about how to tie a buoy. In a minute, I'm going to show you how to tie the rope to the trap. Okay, now I want to show you how to tie off your buoy rope to your crab pot. On the internet, this knot is called the lobster buoy hitch. It's a kind of a slip knot. I'm going to tie off to a part of the pot that is away from the lid so that I'm not interfering with any of that and I also don't want when I'm pulling the pot straight up 
for the doors to be at the very bottom of the trap. So I'm just going to choose this little ring here. Give yourself plenty of rope. You can always cut off what you don't need. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to come up on the right side from the bottom. I'm going to do a full loop around. And then, as I say, I'm going to get to work. I'm just going to go ahead and go through the loop. And now there's another loop down here, the bottom loop. And if you do it right, you end up with something that looks like a kind of a cross like that. And when you tighten that up, it starts to look a little bit like what I used to call, oops, a clove hitch. Like that. But the main point here is once you get that hitch tied, if you pull on the working end, it just self tightens. Now, because I don't want my lobster pot buoy line hitch, crab pot hitch coming undone, I'm going to tie a safety knot. Just like we did before. One, two, around a third time where the finger was. Oh, let's try that again. This lead line's really difficult. So around the finger, one, two, three. Keep your Loops all nice and neat. It'd be better if I didn't have a frayed end to my rope. That's my problem. I was planning on cleaning that up after I tied this knot. Okay. So, this isn't going to slip down. It's just going to get tight and stay tight like that but if that knot starts to slip at all this knot will work its way down until it hits the primary knot and then it'll stop the untying all together so just because we don't like too much tag in hanging around for those of you who are new at this this plastic stays very hot longer than you might expect so make sure you give it lots of time to cool before you start tying your next knot okay okay stop it